I think it's early. I, and I, honestly, I probably think that I would say there's probably a similar amount of questions for both teams because I, I think we know who Ohio State's offense is. I think we know that. I also think we know who Michigan – I mean, really, the the interesting part is I think we also know who Michigan's offense is. Um, we've seen, obviously, with J.J. being the starter for one week, um, it. I think we can all agree it looks very different. So I, I think as we, as we move on and progress in the season, like you said, Dre, questions will be answered. I ju- I, it's starting to get to the point where we wonder – when are we going to know who these teams are? Before the season started, we spoke about it on the channel that Iowa week, we're going to know who Michigan is at that yeah, so you know, after that. that game is over. <laughs> now, I mean, it's you're probably going to push that to what Michigan State week. I, I would yeah. I would probably yeah. argue, you know, around sure. around that time. Um, I, I think Penn State might be before that. I don't don't have the schedule up, but. I mean, even with Penn State, I mean, I think they have a decent amount of limitations. I think with the the new element of of Michigan offense of pushing the ball down the field, I, I think you're you're looking at potentially a high scoring offense to where I'm not sure Penn State can can do those things. Is is veteran of a of a quarterback as Sean Clifford is? I mean, he just he just. He, he's he like just, 30 years old he just, so he should he be just can't seem to put it all together every week like it just it seems to be even in a, 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 a even keeled performance it's just, it's just never or rarely seems to be very high level so i i wonder about that but i mean i it, if it's not penn state and michigan state i mean we're not gonna know who michigan is until thanksgiving weekend and that is a wild thing to really think about is well, we don't know how good or bad our team is until the last regular season game of the season during rivalry week. That's crazy. That's crazy to think about, but potentially we could we could run into that. Well, you know, you know, I've been thinking about. I I, I think there still is a chance of Michigan proving how that they are really good uh, despite their opponent. I mean, if they're, they're going in week to week and they're cr- especially deep into their Big Ten. Uh, schedule and they're crushing their opponents. Like if they're crushing Penn State, they're cr- crushing MSU, they're crushing Maryland, they're crushing Nebraska. Like and they look clearly the, like the better team. Then I would be able to take something from that. Like okay, you know what? We're on a no- another level, right? We're not just good, Big Ten good. No, we're we're clear. Like there's like a huge gap between us and our contemporaries, right? So th- th- that that will show – then I'll be able to kind of pull something from that. Um, it, but it is interesting. You know, think about Clemson for years under Dabo, right? You know, the ACC, most of the time, most years, was really down, you know, while Clemson was, was on their run. And, um, you know, one concern that people would have was how really good is Clemson, and when they get to the playoffs, they're going to get exposed. And most years, they were not. You know, rather win or loss, you know, they competed very highly in every playoff game they were in, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think they've had any bad playoff performance. So, um, look, I, I think as long as Michigan, go, Michigan goes out there and they're proving that they are heads and shoulders better than their opponents, then there's still something you can pull from that. Unfortunately, like these first three weeks, their opponents have been so bad, right? They're not even average, Des. That's been a hard part, right? You know, you go out there and you crush a – look, we've been – I can make jokes on Iowa all day. And Corey, I'm sure, is having a lot of fun on his post-game shows. Uh, but He is not having fun. I will yeah, tell I'm you sure. that. I'm sure. <laughs> but, you know, if Michigan goes out there to Kinnick and they win, gosh, I don't know, 35 to 10, and that, sound, that sounds like too much given 10 points for Iowa right now. But let's say 35 to 10. I mean, that is a heck of a performance. You know that that is really saying something. So, um, hey, you know, like th- th- there still is even with a weaker schedule for Michigan to say to prove that hey, maybe we were we're, we're special. But at the end of the day, in terms of winning a national championship, and no, I don't want to put the cart before the horse. None of none of us, including your Chris and Ty, does want to touch Georgia. So it may not even matter to begin with. <laughs> well, before you start talking about national championship, I want it to be very clear to all of our viewers that are on the channel. 
you said that if all the breaks go Michigan's way, they national championship was not the ceiling. So I want that to be very clear. Don't 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 get on here telling our viewers that national championship is some potential. I believe I was the one who said that. I don't want to touch if, Georgia. Did you yeah, but that's me? fine. But you said national championship. So I, I just want that to be clear. National championship was not anything that you mentioned in Michigan ceiling before the season started. Am I correct? I mean, yes, but I, I didn't think there's, there's no but. Look- there's no but. I, okay, yes, I mean, that is yeah, correct. No, yes, no, I did. I didn't think that was possible. I mean, look, it, to win. <laughs> but here's the problem, like because historically, since the college football playoff started, the one and two seeds are typically there's the one and two seed, and then there's a gap, then there's three, and then there's another gap, then there's four. Right, I saw that one year. Dick Ohio State or Alabama won it in the, with the fourth seed. Right, but for the most part, that's pretty much how it is. So, and a lot of it has to do with like just the overall, not just the raw talent uh, of the starters, but then, but then also the depth. Right, the depth that these Georgia and Alabama teams have, that just Michigan and you know Ohio State kind of um, uh, Cincinnati, Oklahoma. Um, Washington at one year, you know, we just don't quite Notre Dame. Can we just put we just Ohio quite... State in the category of Cincinnati, Washington, <laughs> and who else? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Mark. Ohio sorry to... State's recruiting at the <laughs> level that Georgia and Alabama are recruiting. Uh, okay, well, look, besides the year with Urban Meyer, I mean, y'all haven't really you haven't hosted up that crit that that crystal ball. So, I mean, look, I'm talking about who's they, like this job by now. Four touchdowns in the playoffs two years ago. They have Look. the second most players in the NFL right now to Alabama. They do not put Ohio State <laughs> with Oklahoma. With Cincinnati? State, Cincinnati? That's crazy. Washington. Look, and- just, look, look, we're talk, look, look, Mark, I'm talking about, look, we're all at the dinner table. Now, y'all may have had a, a nice piece too. of steak. What did he say? He said, I am too. <laughs> yeah, look. <laughs> We're all at the dinner table. Y'all have a nice piece of steak for sure. I'm just saying, you know, look, we're we're all having gotten the final prize, right? I think most years Georgia and Alabama have had the dessert. We just kind of had a little bit of the taste of dinner. And I'm trying to work on an analogy on the fly. It may not be working. But the point is, is that there is typically a gap between one, two, and then three and four. That's all I'm trying to say. And I feel good about Michigan's chances getting in that three and four spot, but to be legitimate, a legitimate contender to win in, to win a national title, they're talking about being a one or two seed, and I just I'm ha- I've had a hard time seeing Michigan have all those things go their way, you know, dominating the season the way they would need to to get the one or two seed, and then having the personnel not only from the start the first stringers, but the second stringers as well, where you're like, man, you know. Like case to point, we leave, we lose uh, Blake Corn. Do we have you know? We and ironically, we do. Do we have a really good running back behind him and Dalvin numbers, Right? What's our receiver depth like? Do we have the speed and depth that linebacker? You know? Do we have the disruptive pass rushers to get to a quarterback? You know what I'm saying? So those are the things that I just worry about. We're like, man, I just can never see a legitimate opportunity for Michigan to break through. But you know, hey, I, I guess one thing this past weekend has shown me. Is that anybody can get, can be beat, especially Alabama? I mean, Alabama looked the most pedestrian and vulnerable. I don't think I've ever seen them uh, the way they looked in Austin. So, hey, may, may, maybe this is one of those wacky years where um, you can't get somebody who you wouldn't expect to go all the way and win a championship.